My grandfather, John William Nelson, made some home movies with an 8mm camera back in the 1930s. He shot mostly scenes of normal, everyday life, birthday parties, family vacations, friends and relatives. He probably shot dozens of little spools of 8mm film. Most of these he recut and edited into larger reels to make his own little feature films. The film we are about to see has a lot of family interest for me. It shows relations who are now long gone, many relations that I never knew. However, someone who did know all of these people quite well is my mother, my grandfather Nelson's daughter, Catherine Nelson and Lane, and happily she is here to help me narrate the following scenes. Obviously, we're looking at a flood. Uh, it says this is the Illinois and Sangamon River, which means you're somewhere about a uh, hundred miles north of St. Louis. That was on our trip to St. Louis, then. Okay. Probably stop somewhere along the way to see this. There's Mom and Barb and oh um, yes, this is when we visit so my grandfather my mother's father, who moved to St. Louis when mother was still a very young, very young child, maybe still a baby, in Dixon. He transferred to St. Louis with the American Express Company, the company he had worked for all his life, even in Maryland, and then in Dixon, and then in St. Louis. He remarried when he got to St. Louis, I don't think he had any other children there, but his wife probably had children when they were married. And we'll, we'll meet some of those, I think. Now, here are the Goebbels. Mr. and Mrs. Goebbels. Goebbels, yes. Mrs. Goebbels would be your grandfather's stepdaughter? Stepdaughter, right. Okay. Which would make her your step-aunt? Well, it gets to be pretty vague at that point. <laughs> my mother, my sister, Barbara, and my grandfather, Elmer Klingen. Elmer Ellsworth Klingen. Elmer Ellsworth Klingen. And as far as I know, these two short scenes are the only time he appears on any of uh, your father's yeah. films. Is that right? We have photographs of him, mm -hmm. but of the mo motion picture. Well, he was living in St. Louis after all. He was not near where we were, so, at least at that time. It so, took a while to yeah. get there. So you and Barbara there, huh? how often did you see him? He came here to this part of the country on a fairly regular basis. I remember two dresses. One, my sister's dress had big red flowers, I think, and mine had big blue flowers that he brought with him when he came to visit us. And I know that we have a picture of him standing in front of the home of his son. My mother's brother, William, was older than mother. And when Elmer came to visit here, I think he probably stayed with Bill and Grace Klingen, my mother's brother and his wife. And we have pictures of them in that home, of still pictures of them. And the story about mother finding another Klingon comes when we visited Tawnytown, Maryland and found in the telephone directory two or three pages of Klingons. So we had to try to find the one that was related to mother, made some telephone calls, visited there, and he was not home. His wife was home when we arrived. But when he walked in the room, as he came home, mother's jaw dropped because there was such a great resemblance between him and her father. So we knew we had found at least the Klingon family that he belonged to.
Forest is, Park, St. Louis. That's a big park on the west end of St. Louis. It's still there now. It's it's a huge place. 1,300 acres, I Oh, my goodness. And, I didn't remember that in the, those days, of course. And the zoo is just one corner of that 1,300 acres. Huh. The elephants are part of that park? Evidently, they are. Well, it's still there today. The zoo is still there today. <laughs> well, they've worked hard to make it a family attraction, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And this, I, I looked this up, this is called the Electric Fountain. That's still there today. Is that in Forest Park, too, then? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't remember, but we must have stayed overnight there for at least one night, maybe a couple of nights. Now we're going back to Louisiana, Illinois. Louisiana, Missouri is about 80 or so miles upriver of St. Louis. So okay. You headed north and you're crossing the river by ferry boat. My father was interested in getting us into as many tourist kinds of experiences as possible. Mm -hmm. He worked at that. Oh, look at this, Barbara. <laughs> look at the cars. Only 25 cents. <laughs> oh, now, now we're back at, in Achusa. And now this is this is Grandfather Parker. He is the one with Mary, his wife, who were reared mother when when her own mother died at the time of her birth. Mother grew up in Nachusa with Grandfather Parker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now he's eighty nine years old, and this is nineteen thirty three which means he was born in 1844. Yes. He grew up before the Civil War. Right, that's right. And they moved to Illinois in the early 1870s and were not the first of the Parkers to come to Illinois. There were others who came, in fact, who came to Lee County and then settled other places rather than Lee County. Now, you called him grandfather, but he's actually your... My great-grandfather. Yeah, he's your mom's grandfather. That's right. Here he, he was, is, 89 years old. Look at that. <laughs> Up the steps. <laughs> That's his daughter, Rachel Cora. We called her Aunt Cody, one of the older, older than my mother's mother. About the third or fourth in line of nine daughters that were born to the Parkers in Nachusa. Now, I actually remember Aunt Cody. Yes, this is Aunt Cody. And I only remember her as very being very, very old and us visiting her in some sort of home in, in Nachusa. That's right. Now, this, I believe, is Aunt Minnie. Yes. Aunt Minnie and Uncle George. Aunt Minnie was another one of those sisters who actually lived in Franklin Grove and was married twice. Her first husband died, as well as two of her children. And then she reared my mother's brother, Bill. And there's Aunt Melissa. That's the Wait. oldest of the group in the Chusa, oldest of the sisters. She was a nurse, correct? Yeah, yes, she, she was the character. Mm -hmm. She was the, quote, thinker in the family. She finally enlisted to serve as a nurse in the First World War, and in order to do that, had to take 10 years off her life, and then had trouble getting those 10 years back when she needed pension at the end of her life. <laughs> but she was the thinker in the family, and my mother followed in her line. And you and Barb looking yes. rather bored there. <laughs> I think so. We're too there, young. There's, yeah. there's nobody else your age there. Well, that's because my mother was pretty young. Aunt Melissa, mother, Winifred. Okay, that's the same generation as I am. 
that her mother, Ida Pearl, was the youngest of all these Nechusa girls. That's Winifred, yeah. We'll see her, her wedding somewhere in these pictures later on. Aunt Melissa, grandfather, and mother. This is the backyard of Aunt Cody's house. Now we're back to the general neighborhood of Dixon, and it's 103 degrees, and we <laughs> get to watch your dad changing the tire. Now, okay, I'll stop it here. These just few little frames of film here are really just kind of an Easter egg. I don't think they were intended to be part of this film, but your your dad edited all of these films by hand with right. scissors and glue, and right. just a few stray f frames got into here. So just a little, kind of a little surprise. This now that, yeah, that boy is the same person who hired a limousine to take mother from her Okay. California home to the airport to return to Illinois for the last three years of her life. Okay, so that would be Bob Anderson, right? Bob Anderson, okay. and he is the grandson of Aunt Cody, okay. Cora. The historical sites in northern Illinois were, yeah, we, we made sure we got to all of those places to see all of those places. And this, I think, is Gladys Karen Lavanius Bone. And that's my father's side of the family. This has nothing to do with Nachusa people. She lived in Springfield and about this time was going to school to become a kindergarten level teacher. She had her own private preschool at home and she was going to school in Chicago. I think this is the reason for her being here. And she would be interested in the history that would go along with this tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is on the way to Galena. Terrapin Ridge is actually just east of the town of Elizabeth. And here's... Yeah, this is Gladys. This I'm is sure this is Gladys. Gladys Lavanius Bone, I guess. Yes. Scenery is very typical of northwest Illinois. You can see a lot of spots like this. And hasn't changed considerably, I don't, no. I don't think. Rochelle. This is where I grew up, started to school. And this is an old quarry, and we spent many hours there 
in the summertime. Not all of these belong to us. Which one is... You, there's this Barbara, yes, yeah, that's Barbara. We'll see some divers here, and I know I... Well, no, would that be... Maybe that's, that was... That's I was trying to fall off somehow to get into the water. Those don't belong to our family. <laughs> <laughs> that quarry is still there. It has been improved considerably as a recreational spot in Rochelle. But we spent many hours there in the summertime. Okay, so oh, yes. this is the very last scene of this film. Henry Carlson was... No relationship. I, I think he was a member of our church, and I suspect that maybe he was invited to come and spend some time with Grandfather just to compare notes. He was a similar age to Grandfather, although younger, I think. Yeah, he looks a bit But uh, I think... My folks just had invited him to entertain Grandfather Parker for a little while. So this is no, no longer in Rochelle, you're in Elgin. This is in Elgin now, yes, we have moved to Elgin. We moved to Elgin, I think in 34, 1934, I think was the year. Your mother has to uh, check on him, peeking out the door there. Oh yes, mother, <laughs> checking up on him. <them. laughs> 